Hello, my name is, do I have a mic? Hello, my name is Scarlett Eagle, and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator for the Ellers Danlos Society. And today I'm going to be talking about building your EDS and HSD toolkit. And I have no disclosures to report. After being diagnosed with a type of EDS or HSD, people often wonder what is next. Now that you have a diagnosis, how do you make the most out of life with this condition? Learning how to manage EDS or HSD takes time and often requires multiple different approaches or tools. Today, I'd like to talk about some of the different tools that you can use to better live with EDS or HSD. Starting with support. Now, you may receive support from your friends and family, and you may also receive some support from your healthcare professionals, including mental health professionals. But I'd like to talk about community support from other people with a type of EDS or HSD. Now, how do you find community support? Well, three great ways are through support groups, online communities, and charity organizations. The Ellers Danlos Society offers virtual support groups to our global community, and we also have a directory of local support groups on our website so you can find your nearest support group. Online communities are also an excellent way to connect and learn from other people with a type of EDS or HSD. We have an online community of over 100,000 people with EDS and HSD, and it's a great way to get information about people's experiences and what has helped them. There are also many Facebook groups, both regionally and worldwide, for people living with these conditions. Charity organizations like the Ellers Danlos Society are also an excellent way to connect with other people with EDS and HSD, and this event is an excellent example of this. We also have a directory on our website of local charity organizations, so you can find out if there are any charities near you. If there aren't any local charities, support groups, or online communities near you, I, consider, I encourage you to consider starting something like this in your area. Now let's talk about care. People reach out to the helpline almost every day, asking for help finding an EDS specialist who can help them. Unfortunately, it's not this simple. People with a type of EDS or HSD often experience a variety of symptoms and therefore require care from multiple different doctors in different specialties. For this reason, it's not about finding one doctor who can treat you, but about building a care team of doctors who can address the specific symptoms that you are experiencing. When building your care team, it's very important to ask the right questions. The first thing that you want to do when building your care team is identify your symptoms. Ask yourself which problems need to be addressed. Next, you can assess your needs. Ask yourself which types of providers can provide the care that you need. Also consider your other criteria for your providers. For example, how far are you willing to travel to see them? You may be willing to travel further to see a specialist that you see only once a year than you would be to see your primary care physician or a physical therapist that you see more frequently. Also consider how knowledgeable each provider needs to be about EDS and HSD. Ideally, all of our doctors would be knowledgeable about our conditions, but we know that this is not always the case, and sometimes it's more important than others for our doctors to be familiar with these conditions. For example, if your PT is treating your joint instability, it's probably very important for them to be familiar with joint instability and Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome and Hypermobility Spectrum Disorders. However, is it necessary for the doctor treating your POTS to be an expert on EDS and HSD? Or is it enough that they regularly see patients who have POTS? Now, the answers to these questions will depend on your personal preferences and how EDS and HSD present in you as an individual. But it's important to consider these things and consider the fact that you may have to travel further to see providers who are more knowledgeable about these conditions. Lastly, you can look for specific providers who meet your needs. So here's an example. Let's say you have joint instability, headaches, abdominal pain, and anxiety. 
You may decide to see a physical therapist for your joint instability, a neurologist for your headaches, a gastroenterologist for your abdominal pain, and a therapist for your anxiety. Now, there's not one right or wrong answer for any of these, but it's important to ask these questions because now when it comes time to look for specific providers, you're asking the right questions. Now, instead of looking for one EDS specialist who can treat you, you're looking for specific types of doctors who can address your specific symptoms. So how do you find providers in your area? Well, this is where you can rely on community support. When looking for, your doctor, for doctors in your area, it's best to connect with other people who have a type of EDS and HSD. You can do this through local support groups, online communities, and charity organizations. People in these groups have been in your shoes before, so they're often very willing to share what they learned along the way. I made this list of 10 ways to find doctors near you, and many of them rely on community support. So the Eller Stanlow Society does have a healthcare professionals directory, and providers choose to list themselves in the directory if they have knowledge about EDS and HSD. Now, not every type of provider in every area of the world is familiar with EDS and HSD, or is, um, is a, sorry, is available in the directory. Um, but it's a really great place to start. So it, check out and see which types of providers are available in your area in the directory and go from there. You can also ask your current providers or friends that you already have with the EDS and HSD. Um, for example, if you have a physical therapist who is very knowledgeable about EDS and HSD, they may know of other providers in your area who are also experienced with EDS and HSD. If you don't have anyone within your current network who is able to give you recommendations for the types of providers you're looking for, this is where you should start expanding your network within the community. So you can contact a local support group leader who may be able to offer you recommendations of local resources in your area and many local support groups also have recommended providers list already available. You can also attend a local support group meeting to interact with even more people in your area who have a type of EDS or HSD. There are also, as I mentioned, many local Facebook groups. So for example, I live in Iowa, so I'm in the ehlers Danlos Iowa Facebook group. If I'm looking for, say, a cardiologist, for example, I could search cardiologist within this Facebook group, and I could see posts from years about cardiologists in Iowa who have experience with EDS and HSD. This is what's so great about these online communities is that you're able to get so much information over so many years, while in a support group, you may just be able to get the information that was shared on that one day. Now, if you can't find what you're looking for in past posts, you can always create your own post in this Facebook group. So be sure to include the types of providers that you're looking for, as well as any information that you think would help, maybe what, you're, um, what area that you're looking for this provider in, or what you need them to address, or any additional um, information that would get you useful responses. Our Inspire community is also a great resource for this. You can use it in the same way as you would use these Facebook groups. You can search for past posts about doctors in your area, or you can create your own post on Inspire, including the same information that you would in one of those Facebook posts. There's also a feature on Inspire to explore members. So Inspire is created as a platform for people with chronic health conditions to connect with each other. So it's a lot more anonymous than Facebook is meant to be. Um, and many people like this and choose not to share their location. But many people do. And under the Explore Members feature, you can type in your zip code, your state, or your country, and you can find members near you. This is particularly useful if you live in an area where EDS and HSD are not diagnosed um, as often, or if there are not local resources such as a local support group or a Facebook group. And you can add the people in your area as a friend and connect with them that way. You can also be sure to tell your doctors, your current doctors, about EDS Echo. EDS Echo is a free educational program for healthcare professionals to learn to better care for people with a type of EDS or HSD. There are different programs for different types of providers, and continuing education credits are available for providers who attend these programs. Healthcare professionals are required to earn these continuing education credits anyway, 
So what better way for them to earn them than by learning about EDS and HSD? Be sure to tell your care team about EDS Echo. Now I'd like to take just a moment to consider the importance of having a good primary care provider. Sometimes people with EDS and HSD think that their primary care provider can't do anything to help them because they don't know about EDS and HSD. But your primary care provider actually holds a really valuable position in your care team. While it may be true that many of your care decisions are made by the specialist, your primary care physician can refer you to these specialists and can coordinate your overall care. After being referred to a specialist, they often report back to your primary care physician, but they don't always communicate with each other. So as you can see in this image, your primary care physician is, or GP is the only provider on your care team who really is aware of all of the aspects of your care. A good primary care provider does not have to be an expert on EDS or HSD. They just have to be willing to listen and learn and work with you as you develop a care plan that meets your needs. Now let's talk about information about EDS and HSD. Now, not all information is created equal, and we know that there's a lot of misinformation out there, so it's really important to evaluate the credibility of your sources. These sources may include community experience, web content, videos, and research articles. We've already talked a lot about community experience. It can be really valuable to hear about other people's experience and what worked for them. However, no two people with EDS and HSD are the same. So just because something worked for someone else does not necessarily mean that it will work for you. But sometimes there isn't research or information available on topics that we're interested in. And in these cases, community experience is the best information that we can find. There's also a lot of web content about EDS and HSD. The first thing that you want to ask when you're evaluating web content is, was it written and reviewed by experts? At the Ehlers-Danlos Society, for example, all of our content is written and reviewed by people who write and talk about EDS and HSD every single day. On the other hand, the person who wrote the WebMD or Helpline page about EDS and HSD is probably not an expert. If the person writing the article is not an expert on the topic, did they cite their sources? This makes it much easier to verify the credibility of the content that they're putting out. With web content, you also have to ask if the author is biased. Are they promoting a product or service, or do they have some other intention with the content that they're sharing? And lastly, always ask when it was written. This is particularly important because in 2017, the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes were reclassified and the hypermobility spectrum disorders were introduced. This means that content written after 2017 should include the proper terminology. They should call it hypermobile EDS, not type three or hypermobility type. They should call it the hypermobility spectrum disorders, not joint hypermobility syndrome or any other variation that you often hear. If a source is not using the proper terminology to discuss the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders, this should be a red flag that they are not as knowledgeable as they should be on this topic. There's also so much valuable video content out there about EDS and HSD. All of our events are recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel or website, and these videos are from experts in the field. So even though we can't all see experts, content from these experts is available at your fingertips. So I really encourage you all to take advantage of this and see what videos are available that may help you. Research articles are written and reviewed by professionals and often provide the original content that is used to create other sources of information. In 2017, the American Journal of Medical Genetics published a special issue on EDS and HSD, and they published an additional issue in 2021. These issues contain articles written by the experts, and they are an incredible source of information. If you're looking for somewhere to start with reading research articles, this is an excellent place for you. Lastly, we have management strategies. As I mentioned before, a combination of approaches is often required to manage EDS and HSD. These may include medications, mobility aids, bracing and supports, movement and exercise, diet, mental health support, 
relaxation and sleep, and adaptations and planning. This conference is filled with so many incredible examples of each of these, and you can also use your support system, care team, and sources of information to find the best management strategies for you. Now, the last thing that I wanna share with you is what I like to call the stages of living with EDS and HSD. First, you have the diagnosis stage. This is the time between the onset of your symptoms and receiving an accurate diagnosis. After being diagnosed, you can't learn to manage EDS or HSD overnight. You must first go through the trial and error stage. During this stage, you may try many different management strategies before settling on a plan that works for you. But eventually, you will get more comfortable managing your condition. When you're first diagnosed, it may feel like EDS or HSD is at the front of your mind in everything you do. In the management stage, EDS and HSD are still present in everything you do, but now they're in the background. You will get comfortable managing your usual symptoms so that when new symptoms arise, you are not overwhelmed by every other symptom and you can properly focus on the new symptoms and how to address them. If you are not yet to the management stage, take comfort in knowing that it does not always feel this way. By building your toolkit full of support, care, information, and management strategies, you can learn to better live with EDS and HSD. Thank you.